Our physical and virtual footprints are as unique as we are. Each time I traverse the internet, I leave a small clue of who I am, my interests, my politics, as well as the regular packages of geekdom that come from Hong Kong. Every piece of metadata from Google and others enhance the accuracy of the picture they have of me. Every time we browse, use a service of Google Search, YouTube, Plus, Maps, Casa, Calendar, all of these provide the megapixels of who we are. We manage the footprints we leave, but not the ones others leave in our name. You do exist online, even if you don't know it. Ideally, the megadata mixes with millions of others, so they're indistinguishable. However, they still have a wealth of data, wealthy data mine. Our actions dictate how we will be remembered. Without understanding the implications, I did make marks in wet cement. We do need to groom our identity, just like we had groom our physical identity, so that we're remembered for the, uh, the right reasons. In 2004, I had a small digital footprint, mostly with people that I knew in face-to-face -face situations. Now, I'm part of a community of more than 20 globally online uh, our global communities online. Educationally, I place my footprints where I want them to be, I host my own domain, I share my learning with Creative Commons licensing, and Twitter reflects my footprints. I know every time I blog, I comment, I tweet, I post, or someone else posts in my name, that expands my footprint. One way I monitor my footprint is being a little vain in Google search myself. When we're no longer leaving footprints, the visibility and the impact may fade. However, they may be captured by something like the Wayback Machine, like this pre ISTE conference from NEC 1998. The breadth of our footprints may seem overwhelming. In fact, 23% of pre birth scans are now posted online, and 81% of children from an AVG survey show that they have a digital footprint by the age of two. Words in education set the tone and context. In the 90s, we talked about information technology, then information communication technology, and I think that's wrong. We don't want to talk about technology. It's about being information and media literate. Citizens communicate with the tools of today. They're able to stick their neck out and take risks to create their future. Can monkeys communicate? Can they be literate? They can but they're definitely not citizens. Instead of a bridge to the past, we need to innovate and envision the future. It requires being able to learn, adapt, innovate, create for their future. Even if we don't know it, we're gonna to have to build it. Preparing for the future includes understanding what we do and how it shapes us or leaves marks on us. The sights, the sounds, the interactions we're exposed to are digital tattoos. Every interaction leaves a trace mark on us. Some of these marks, from inappropriate emails, misunderstood messages, or warm fuzzies, leave marks on us like henna that are temporary and will fade. Others become fully inked over years and are permanent. We may not be aware of our tattoos, but others will see them. Their lasting remarks, um, we have to be sensitive for ourselves and for our students about the marks that are left behind on them. Our world has changed. The deluge of online activity and the media we absorb affects us in our face-to-face -face life as well. We need to be cognizant of the tattoos that are being done to us. There are pitfalls of nearly ubiquitous computing. We can successfully hide from the possibilities but we have to embrace the opportunity to be in control of both our virtual footprints and the tattoos that are left on us. In 2008, I collaboratively worked in Wikipedia on information media literacy and defining I invite you to go to bit.ly digital tat to help develop the concept of a digital tattoo so that others can understand this as well. I leave you with these questions for you to consider and your colleagues. How are you managing your digital footprints and your digital tattoos? Thank you.